You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Derry here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's some email on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Red lifts up a crate and flips it, dumping the carefully folded contents onto the floor. Bruce laughs and does the same, cl same, clearing the containers in exchange for a huge mess on the ground. There you go. Seems much more your style. What does that mean? It uh, means you're a mess. Three of us move into the hall, all walking the same way. You too, Zandy? I'd like to think you am a clean young man. As far as, as far as hyenas go, sure, but I bet that's the cleanest your room is ever going to be. Hey, that's not true. When I get to tier 3, that room will be spotless. Right, and then you'll move in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Easy. You're going to be okay while I'm doing this orientation thing? Yeah, I'll be fine. Probably hang out in the library or something. The three of us part ways. I start down toward the library. Before I get there, I remember my phone is still in our room. No, my room. It's not our room anymore. I turn around to go back upstairs to grab it. My own room, finally. That's what I've wanted all this time. Some peace and quiet. I get to the room in record time, or at least it feels faster because I don't have to have someone talking my ear off. A few of Redline's things are still here. He's still planning to come down and grab them, but I guess that will happen later. My phone's sitting charged on the nightstand. I drop down on my bed and let out a long, tired sigh. I'll just hang here for a minute before heading down to the library. No red line, no Bruce. Just peace. Quiet. It's like a long time since I've been able to relax knowing that someone will barge into my room. It's nice. Last time I felt like this was right after I moved out of my parents' place. God, I was so scared. My hand was shaking when I went to sign that lease. I'm surprised they even rented a place to a teenager. Guess landlords will do anything if the money's good. I wanted to stay with Vinny for longer, but he'd done so much for me already. I was such a burden. Maybe I should give him a call sometime, catch up with him. See how he's doing. Not that I'd be able to visit until I'm out of this hellhole. It would require me to actually want to fight, but everyone knows that won't happen. Bucky and Drayden probably know that, too, know that much too, but they don't know how to break the news to me. Might as well resign to a life of getting my ass beat by Bruce, right? At least he has enough heart to try not to kill me. I need to start being realistic. If I had any sort of value, I'd be winning fights already. I'd be tier 2 like Red is. So in a way, I probably deserve this. The fights, the lockdown, the isolation, it's all punishment for me. No, stop. What am I thinking? I sit up on the bed and immediately notice how fast I'm breathing. Slow down. Breathe. This panic attack shit never stops, does it? Does being alone with my thoughts for five minutes really do that much damage to my psyche? It's like, you know. God, I'm fucking pathetic. Just chill the fuck out. My voice reaches no one's ears. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm... Hang on, someone's at the door. The electronic thumb pad beeps and the door unlocks. They still have you registered on my door lock red line? Oh. I turn to greet Red and see Bruce standing there, alone. He looks more confused than I do. Oh. How did you get in here? Hi, Zan. He shuts the door quick, beaming wide. I, uh, didn't think you'd be back so soon. How did you get in here? I heard you the first time. And I'll keep asking until I get an answer. How did you get in? The door was locked. Leave. Bruce sighs and drops down on Redline's bed, visibly uncomfortable. I didn't mean to creep on you or anything honest. I just came back for the last of Redline's junk. Why'd your thumb work on our door? Being the champ comes with some privileges. One of those being unlimited access to pretty much every, anywhere in the facility. So you can get into any room you want. Pretty much. Not that I've tried anything weird. When I got bumped from Tier 3 to Champion, I left some stuff in my old room. Went down to retrieve it, and I was able to unlock the door, even though somebody already moved in. Scared the hell out of him. <laughs> Tried a few other doors after hours, and they all got, got unlocked right away. Been able to do it for years, so it must have been an oversight. So you were just gonna sneak into the room? Just to get the rest of Redline's things. I didn't think you'd be in... You'd be in I didn't think you'd be back. Not like I was planning on hassling you anymore. I fucked you up enough as it is. He looks guilty, and I sigh and sit up in my bed. Sitting on the side of it, facing Bruce. It's really nice of you to help out Redline with the whole move today. Hmm. Better than better better me than some of these other creeps. Really don't want some random heavyweight fucking with Red's stuff. Still can't believe Fang wouldn't just hire movies or movers or something. 
Be amazed at all the way they try to cut costs down here. I was the only one that actually volunteered to help move shit. It was mandatory for everyone else. I'm sure Red appreciates it. Do you need any help moving the rest of it? I need three hands, and I really don't want to make a third trip, so sure. We'll gather up the remainder of his belongings and make our way up the staircase. It's a little awkward, but I don't know which one of us is feeling more uncomfortable. Red's room is still a mess, but he just moved in, so I can't really blame him for that. We set the last few things in the corner, and Bruce clears his throat. Here we go. The room feels way smaller. Maybe it'll be better when he tidies up. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, Zan. Since we're actually alone now, I, uh... He sighs and clenches his fists. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. You don't like to keep apologizing, Bruce. It's fine. No, it's not fine. I should have been more careful with you. Yeah. I really don't want to make enemies with someone so close to Red. He hasn't. He has too much to deal with already. So, you don't have to forgive me. I know that, but I just really want you to know how sorry I am for everything. Thank you. I'm, uh, glad Red is someone to hang out with. His last group of buds bailed on him. Never liked them anyways. They were creeps. You should be around people that actually give a shit. Thank you. Coffee time. All right. Hmm. I can't exactly say I've done a good job at giving, giving a shit about him before recently. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't know. Keep an eye out for him, will ya? He's one of the good ones. Um, fighters, I mean. One of the good ones to have around, down here. He lets out a frustrated sigh and drops to sit on the bed. I'm shit with words. You get what I mean, right? I think so. I sit next to him. The bed is, sh the bed is shifted uncomfortably toward his end. It's just gonna be it's just gonna be hard if he's on a different tier. Different room, different coach, probably different schedule. Huh. <laughs> don't worry about the coach thing. I think the little mutt's got a thing for Bucky. He's not going anywhere. But the room thing will be tricky. I gotta keep up appearances, and you don't normally have access to this floor. Not unless someone gives me access, or I could just win a fight and get to the tier two easily. Heh, <laughs> yeah, easy. You actually hit me pretty hard in the last fight. Feels like you've been working out. I roll my eyes. Yeah, I'm sure it was just a lucky shot. Thanks. How do you know Redline? Bruce shrugs. Eh, we're co-workers. That's pretty obvious, Bruce chuckles. Nah, Red was pretty hard to miss when he first came down here, little... Little fucker's loud. But he's also fun to have around. Life of the party, always coming up with stuff to do when we're b when you're bored. Yeah, I know how that goes. I don't think a night went by without him trying to convince me to try something new. Swimming, gaming, treadmill races. You ever take him up on that? Nah. Why not? I'm... I don't know. Bruce leans back and smiles. You're missing out, man. He knows how to put a smile on people's faces. Or tries to, at least. All the other guys just laugh at him. Pisses me off real bad. He deserves better than that. Better than all this. There's a beat of silence and Bruce continues. Anyways, first time I see this guy, he starts freaking out. Like in a good way. Happens all the time when I meet fans. He flashes a cocky grin. For a second, I swear I can see sparkles around his head. But then, get this. He has to spar with me. Can you believe it? Absolutely can. He tries to spar with Bucky three times a week. Right, but that's because he's a little he's a gay little fuck. You can't just walk up to the biggest guy on campus and ask to fight him. Anyway, I said yes, but kinda as a joke. Cause it's like pulling teeth to get guys my size to roll with me, so what's this little twerp gonna do? And he choked you out. Yeah, maybe in his wet dreams. I made him tap about 20 times in 5 minutes and left him on the gym mats. The little fucker came back the next day, thanked me, and asked for a rematch. I always feel like they'd get annoying fast. Maybe if he was an asshole, yeah, but that's the difference between Red and the rest of these creeps. Red gives a shit. He gives a shit about you, about MMA, about getting stronger. And when we wrestled, he wasn't just trying to prove something or get his rocks off or whatever. There you go. Coffee time. He actually wants to get stronger, and he has fun doing it. So, no, it's not annoying. I'll wrestle him any day. Or at least I would, until I got a fun little sermon from the commissioner about fraternizing with the lower tiers. They didn't have a problem with it, but he went on and on about how it won't arbor the right attitude. And they strive, and what they strive for that down here. Whatever the fuck that means. And then he joined the picture and, yeah, it's been a minute since I got to hang with Red. Feels like I haven't been a good friend to him, so helping him move is the least I can do. He looks frustrated. Maybe disappointed? It's so hard to tell, but at least I feel like I can lower my guard a little. I know what you mean. I haven't done a good job at being too friendly with him. I guess he's waiting for me to continue. 
the way I live above ground was totally different. I was alone for a long while, and I kind of, and I kind of expected that, that to be the same down here. He just never quit. I didn't get it, and it frustrated me. I didn't deserve it. I still, I still don't think I do. So I kept being an asshole, expecting him to get fed up and leave. And then I wouldn't have to feel bad about feel bad that he has to put up with me. And I could keep, keep being alone, and he could find someone else that deserves his good attitude. Sounds like bullshit. I don't know what you I don't know what you did to, th to think you deserve to be alone, but if you're anything like Red, it's probably bullshit. Plus, he wouldn't try to be your friend if you were an asshole. But I'm glad I finally got an explanation. You said a lot of shit when you were loopy from those meds. Meds? Oh right, the trim. That was you. You carried me back to my room after my trim. I thought that was a dream. Nah, you're light as fuck, and it was a short trip. Why did you do that? Bruce shrugs. Cause I needed to. Who else was gonna bother? Probably could have gotten back on my own. And if he didn't? Sorry. Don't start. The last thing I need is another lightweight apologizing for nothing. But if you're really sorry, then pay it forward. What do you mean? Sounds like we both owe Red back for putting up with our bullshit. I don't know if hanging out in his room with him without him counts. Oh, yeah, huh. We really need to be in here for a while. We really have been in here for a while. Let out a small laugh. I'll think of something to do for him then. But we'll probably get in trouble if we stay here for too long. Got any ideas? What? You still hang? You still want to hang out? Clingy. He flashes a smirk before standing upright, stretching out as tall as the ceiling will let him. Fine. I got an idea. But you might have to break a few rules. Are you going to report me? Don't, don't give me a reason to. His massive hand reaches down, probably to ruffle my hair, but I flinch. There's a pause before he pulls his hand back. Let's go. Where? Bruce had already opened the door. His claw raises to his mouth, signaling me to shush it silently. I roll my eyes and follow him down the hall. We creep down one way, taking a side hallway that leads to an elevator. Once inside, Bruce presses his thumb to a square on the side and it immediately kicks to life. I'll ask again, where are we going? Penthouse. The penthouse? The elevator stops and opens to reveal a set of closed doors. Bruce unlocks them and steps inside. Wait, you know, water time? Or coffee time? Alright. I step into Bruce's room. No, more like an entire house. The doors lead into a living room area, divided by a hallway with, a door with, with doors that lead into other rooms. This is enormous. Yeah, I renovated and decorated it myself. Did you actually? Fuck no, I'd probably break something. Well, not probably. I definitely have broken a couple door frames. Come on, I'll give you the tour. Bruce leads me through the entryway. <sighs> Living room. He's got two couches with a huge flat screen TV along with an entertainment center housing a lot of books and game consoles. I can't help but wonder. It's weird. Hmm? It feels too... nice? That's not what I should say, but Bruce laughs. I get what you mean. Like I said, I didn't furnish it, but they did a way better job than I ever would have. As long as the bed's comfy and the food's good, I don't really give a shit. Oh, and the temperature. Yeah, I noticed. It's kind of muggy in here. That's the humidifiers, and I usually keep the thermostat cranked a bit. I can turn it down if you want. I guess that's the dinosaur blood for you. I feel rude asking him to change his living situation when he was the one that invited me. Here, one sec. Without asking, he presses a few buttons on a keypad on his wall and the temperature starts dropping right away. Sorry about that. You really didn't have to, it's fine. But thanks. He smiles and continues the tour. Dining room. Bedroom. Bathroom's at the end of the hall. It's all so much. Why does he need a full-size dining room? His bed looks about as big as my entire room, and his room is almost three times the size of that. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, uh, before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely uh, bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do. We greatly appreciate your contributions to the channel. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cage Silvermoon. Thank you for going to a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. Thank you for subscribing to our ultimate tier. We love you. You're awesome. Excuse me. We love you. You're awesome. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits and get access to our Not Safe for Work videos, it's as little as $5. Anyway, I love you all. I shall see you on the next video. Bye-bye.